this episode of Electronics Essentials, we'll be looking at soldering, including some safety tips, the soldering iron itself, starting with a kit, perf board, and using no circuit board at all. Remember, safety first! The world of soldering can actually be a dangerous place, and we'd like to make sure that you tread through it safely! safely. I like to follow three simple rules. The first rule is never solder anything that's got power attached to it, even if it's just a little battery. You can easily short something out and perhaps hurt yourself or damage the circuit. Rule number two, watch out for the solder itself. Solder is usually tin these days, but sometimes solder is a mixture of tin and lead, and lead is a very toxic chemical, so be careful. When you see that smoke coming off, that's probably the rosin core inside, but there could be lead in it too, so make sure you use a well-ventilated area, or at least keep a fan nearby to blow out that smoke away so you're not breathing it in. Rule number three, treat that soldering iron with respect. It gets hot, really hot. So make sure you use it only for soldering and keep it away from your skin. You'll get a nasty burn. Don't be a dumbass like this guy. So here's a few tips on soldering because basically you gotta solder things together or your circuits aren't gonna stay put together. Now a great way to practice soldering is to get something like this. It's a little electronics kit. One of the reasons these are so good is, first of all, they're pretty much guaranteed to work, so you don't have to worry about getting wires crossed or anything like that. And second of all, you get the luxury of having a printed circuit board, which makes things easier to assemble. So here's what we want to end up with. A little preamp and an amplifier. So let's see how we put it together. This is a pretty typical soldering station although you can use just a plain Jane soldering iron too. In this case, I've got a separate power switch and a handy holder for a sponge. The sponge is actually pretty useful, so you want to keep one of these handy. Now right now it's a little dry and crusty, so what we'll do is we'll get, we'll get a little bit of water on that. There we go. And now we'll turn the soldering iron on. There we go, we have light, and we'll give it a few moments to heat up. Now as with any electrical appliance, be careful with it, make sure you plug it into a grounded outlet, and also because the end is going to get very, very hot, you want to be very careful with it, because yes, you can get burned very, very easily. So do take care with these things. Soldering iron developed a hot spot, it's easy to find, just dab a little solder on, you'll quickly discover where the hot spot is. Remember, that's the point you want to use, because it's the hottest. When you're soldering, once you've done, wipe it off on your damp sponge. This will help keep the tip clean and really extend the life of the tip of your soldering iron. So when you're assembling a kit, first thing you should do is make sure all the components are there. So crack it open. There's usually a typical little bag with the parts in it and then the little printed circuit board itself. They're usually sealed up pretty good. Dump them all out. And then, for heaven's sakes, keep the instructions handy. They will tell you what components are which. And the components are usually pretty well laid out on the circuit board, so it's easy to find their locations. Typically, most circuit boards actually have the little white areas like that drawn out where the components actually sit. Once you're fairly certain you've got all the bits and pieces there, one rule of thumb I like to use is assemble the flattest components first. Typically, that's things like resistors and very small capacitors. So what we'll do is we'll sift through our parts and figure out which ones are which and get them all sorted out. Alright, we've got all the pieces separated out now into the different components. And now what we'll do is start with the resistors, because they're the probably smallest component we're going to run into. Now, because they're all sorts of different values, if you remember, there's that lovely color coding. So we will use that to identify them. That's where the instructions come in handy. So, we'll look at the first two, which are R1 and R2. It's supposed to be a 680 ohm resistor, which should have a blue, gray, and brown stripe. So here's a little Dickens here, a blue, gray, 
and brown stripe. Blue is a six, gray is an eight, and brown means one, so one zero, six eight zero, six eighty ohms. And we should find two of those. Okay, these are R1 and 2. So what we want to do is bend the leads of the resistors down at 90 degrees right next to the body of the resistor. There we go. Should be good enough. And then we want to insert it into the location for R1. All right, we can see the position for R1 and R2. So we'll insert those in there. Now because it's a resistor, it doesn't matter which way you put it in. I'll put the other one in as well. Closer look at where they live. Here's a nifty little trick I like to use when I'm putting components on a board like this. We need to flip it over to solder it. We don't want them falling out. So what I do is to take a little piece of scotch tape and I tape them down on top of the board. Now when I flip it over, how about that? The components stay put. And it's way easier to solder them. All right, now the tricky part, actually soldering it on together here. So what we'll do is I like to take a little bit of the solder and just tip it onto the iron so that we know it's hot. And it also helps transfer the heat better. So what you wanna do, you don't wanna keep the heat on too long. So touch the tip to the bottom, give them a second or two to get warm, touch the soldering iron, and you should see it just kinda of nicely flow onto the little pad that the resistor is connected to. I'll do the other one now. There you go, it doesn't have to be on very long. Oops, make sure the heat. And you can kind of see when it suddenly flows in and clings onto the pad like that. That's a very basic solder. Now, when you're done, Get rid of the soldering iron. And now we'll clip off the excess here because we don't need all these extra leads floating around. And there we have our first two resistors soldered on. Nice clean solder joints. And we haven't kept the heat on so long that we're going to risk damaging the components. That's your biggest uh, enemy here, is putting the heat on for too long and cooking your components. Now resistors are pretty tough, so they're a real good thing to get started with. As you get into more complicated things like capacitors and then transistors and finally integrated circuits, transistors and integrated circuits can really be damaged by heat very easily. So you got to be careful. The last thing we'll do is we'll flip it over and we'll take that little piece We'll flip it over and take that little piece of scotch tape off because those components are going to stay put now. If they don't now, something's wrong. All right, we're in set here for the next two resistors. Now, use the scotch tape. Resist the temptation to just flip it over and bend the leads. It'll be very difficult to trim them afterwards, so a little piece of tape will be your friend here. And if you're having trouble keeping the board still, like I am, guess what? Another piece of scotch tape act as a third hand for you to hold it in place. Doesn't take much, but it sure helps. You don't need a lot of solder. You can see here I've accidentally bent the leads over. 
go, that looks nice. Clean the tip off. Good advice for a lot of things. Trim the old ends of the leads off here. And you can see what I mean when you bend the leads. It takes it makes it a little difficult to trim them off as cleanly as you'd like, so be careful with that. And there we go. We've got the last resistor in place. The next flattest component, it turns out, is this little socket. Now this is for the uh, integrated circuit. So in this case, it slips right in. Now you'll notice on the drawing, there's a little uh, curved notch at the end. So make sure you get that on your socket. It will flip in very nicely, but it's going to fall out real easy. So this, when, this is when you really need that uh, piece of tape to hold things in. Now an IC socket itself really isn't a component, it's just something you're going to plug a component into. So it isn't as easily damaged by the heat, but you still want to be careful, particularly since the pins are very close together. So make sure, and you know what, I'm going to get myself into trouble here, so I'm going to tape the board down because it's going to want to move on me. See there? If you get an accidental solder bridge, just run the soldering iron quickly between the two pins and that'll usually uh, clean it right out. There we go. That hardly took any time at all. Take a look at this diagram to get an idea of what different solder joints look like. This first one's not bad. There was good wetting. In other words, the solder flowed onto the pad, but it looks a little light. If this board was subject to any kind of vibration, there's a risk of cracking here. The second one's almost perfect. Enough solder to create that sort of little peaked cap like that, and it's completely covered the pad. This third one, we went a little overboard. Way too much solder. Not necessarily bad, but it's a waste of solder, and depending on how close together your other components are, you could get a short. This last one, terrible. It's known as a cold solder joint. The solder didn't even wet to the pad at all, and in fact was just barely hot enough to melt, so it formed a little ball sitting on top of the end of the component lead. Next on our list of components, da, 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 the electrolytic capacitors. Now get this, every circuit board will have a little plus sign where the positive side of the electrolytic goes, but guess what? Capacitors mark the negative side, so remember. Negative side away from the positive. Put the positive on there. We'll do these two first because they're pretty close together. And because they are now the tallest thing going on the circuit board, if we want to, we can just hang on to the leads, flip the board over, and we should be in pretty good shape here because they're not going to want to wander out too much. You can see they're pretty much flush. All right, and we're back into solder mode here. We'll get the... And ta-da! The finished product, finally. Nicely soldered. All the parts are in place. Flush with the board. Soldering is nice and neat. And it's all set for testing. If you don't have a printed circuit board and you're just assembling circuits by yourself, then you'll want to use something like this. It's called perforated board, or perf board for short. 
And what you'll do with this is actually put all the individual components on it, but then you have to figure out what components are supposed to be hooked up to what and all the wiring. So it's a little more difficult, but once you've had some experience, it's pretty easy to work with this too. If you're putting components on a perf board, you don't have the advantage of having these little metal pads from a printed circuit board. So you're basically just connecting point to point. The principle is still the same, but you've got to be a little more careful because now you're actually relying on the components themselves to act as the contact points. But it's basically the same kind of idea. And here's a great tip. If you're connecting two different components together, but don't even have a circuit board, and you just want to solder the two ends together like two pieces of wire, put some solder on each end first. That's called tinning them. Allow them to cool and then bring the two pieces together and solder them. Because they've already got some solder on them, it'll flow together much easier and you'll really reduce the risk of overheating them. Phew, that was a lot to cover. Got it all memorized? Nah, didn't think so. But to help you remember, here's a little segment we like to call Recap Time. Recap Time! Let's review what we learned today if you hook it up wrong. Screwed and it'll blow up in your face. Remember my three soldering rules. Don't solder any circuit with power on it. Maintain solder safety because there's chemicals in there. And watch that soldering iron. It's hot. We're melting metal, don't forget. When you're starting, tape those components down. Smallest ones first. It'll make it way easier to solder and keep them from falling out. When soldering, keep contact time to a minimum. That solder should melt fairly quickly and you don't want to risk damaging your components. If you don't have a printed circuit board, perf board is a great option. You can build your own circuits this way, but you have to be careful because you're actually laying out the wiring. And finally, if you just need to solder a couple of wires or components together, tin the end of each one first, then solder them together. You'll reduce the risk of burning them out and they'll go together just fine. Stay safe and have fun.